Hi, welcome to this edition of Taking Off. Today, compression checks with John Effinger. We're going to be taking up Mark Zimmerman's beautiful 210. Or at least I'm not taking it up. Mark and John will. You'll be piloting. I hope so. You know, you're about to begin the annual on Mark's bird. Uh, what are the steps? Okay, first thing we're going to do is take it up, warm up the engine, gives us a good excuse to fly, and then we're going to come back here, we're going to do the compression check, and know where we were at for a good starting point. All right, cool. Okay. Close the window. Okay, tell, yeah, tell him what you do on this. Get it up to Okay, so tips. we're gonna get it up to 17. Pretty close, right in there. Get her leaned out, get some EGT rises. There we go. Put her in normalized mode. Sixteen seventy. That ain't bad. Nice equal rise. Sixteen seventy again. And a prop cycle. That looks good. One more little. Get a little warm oil up in that propeller dome. Okay. Okay, we got cow flaps open. We got the gear down. Good light. Cal Ten degrees of flaps. Everything's Trim in. set. Looks good. It's ready set. Uh, Hicks Traffics and Cherry taking the active on a uh, three-two for a uh, west departure. Hicks. Uh, let's try one four Hicks. <laughs> A little bit of a left cross, anticipated a little bit, and if it doesn't pan out, then just... Hey, traffic, much here, uh, says, uh, it's pretty body bad here to the northwest. We are right now right cross in 146. Okay, observing our manifold pressure, heels on the floor, no brakes, right on up to 36 and a half inches. Feel the weight off the nose wheel. Just come on back on the stick till you feel the weight off of it. And then just hold that nose wheel about two inches off the ground and just let it fly right off. Now then, little nose down, looks good, gear up, flaps up, climb power. Looks good, looks real good. Hicks traffic, Centurion departing to pattern to the west, Hicks. That's a nice takeoff. Nice airplane. Flies pretty good. Doing all right back there, Jake? Oh yeah. Go in the ride. Yeah, these are pretty good airplanes. I'm going to pull back a little bit of fuel. We don't really need to yeah, I'll put, burn everything yeah, out go, right now. Yeah, usually I climb at about 20, uh, 25 gallons an hour. And then once you get it leveled off, we'll pull it back and see what it'll do on 13 and a half gallons. And see if that, that cylinder goes berserk on us. We're going to need to make that trip over to Bridgeport, too, for some petrol at some point. You don't want to do that now, do you? Nah. Uh, no, nah, they're... He got that camera out on the wing tips just to shake it away. I hope it don't... I hope it's there when we land. I was... No, it's <laughs> well, the he's, same thing, man. I was like... That, that but thing he's got that, got that lanyard on there, so if it... So when it comes off, it just it does just like beats this your on wing, the wing up. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going into annual anyway. We can always. <laughs> well, we'll fix that one. What do they say? Uh, cut to shape, bend to fit, paint to hide. All right, pull her back to about 13 and a half gallons an hour. That's good. 
We'll rock along here. That see that number three? Yep. That's right, just rock along, give it a little bit more uh, air. We'll just uh, we'll just observe what's going on here for a little bit, see if it'll come back down. It's uh, it's bet to where the uh, the blue line will go yellow at 1550, and that's by no means red line. Red line would be 1650, but it's just an indicator that uh, it's that that far out. Hey, there's just some smooth air. Not bad. Yeah, it's it's creeping up there. 16. Sure is. Well, that's the. Let me get back on altitude. That's uh why we're doing the compression check, though. Got yeah, runs like a clock, but uh, and it cycles. It cycles through that. Yeah. I bet you we got a valve burning. What do you think? Well, I think we're going to know a little more about it in a next hour. It runs so doggone good, though. Yeah, you'd never know you had a problem unless you had an engine monitor oh, watching that for you. Yeah. You know, uh, again, like I say, if you're flying a single engine airplane, you've got all your eggs in one basket. You might as well have an engine monitor to tell you that something's going wrong up front. If you didn't have this monitor in here, you'd never know. I would never suspect there was an issue going on here. There's no way. There's no way. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get down to pattern altitude, say, what, 1,600 feet. And uh, we'll slow this thing down to 120 before we throw the gear out. But what we'll do is we'll look and see what power setting will hold 120 straight and level. Right, why don't we do that now? Just come, come on back out on the power and don't let it descend anymore. And let's slow it down to 120 now. And then we'll add power to see what it takes to keep us there. Well, there's 120 right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the prop right, into. Let's, go. let's run the prop into 2700 because that's where you're going to be in a pattern. Okay. I'm gonna put some more fuel in. Now then, let's let's fly it straight and level at uh, at 120. Looks like you're going to need maybe just a little bit more power to hold you up here. So it, uh, with your prop full in, it's going to take Six traffic, 17, uh, inches, here, Fox, God, 17 base flight, inches of man one, four, eight, full stop. Man, it's going to be a little more. I'm going to get the count flaps out again, at least half. So 20 inches? Wait. Well, you're still not 120, are you? No, not yet. So what, what you prove to yourself is you can slow this airplane down to 120 clean. Now, one thing that slowed you down a lot. Extra traffic, stop here, nine zero, box stop, turning five zero one four eight. When you went stop. flat on the pitch, you got traffic over here too. You got him. Got him. So you've got twenty two and a half inches of manifold pressure. That's the same pressure. airplane that we uh, came up behind earlier. All right. So you see, you see what you need. So you know that when you get down to your pattern, you can pull the power all the way off get down to 120 and then add back 22 and a half inches, you're there. Right. All right? You buy that? Okay. All it. right. Okay, good. Your airplane, take us in. Oh, we're going to kind of leave it set up. And when you when you uh, come back on the, or when you dro go to drop the gear, you're going to lose more speed right there. So. This, this is a good this is a good number to know in this airplane 22 and a half inches well plus to know it just when you get in turbulence yeah like what we're getting ready to do now <laughs> yeah we can come on back down to 2500 on the rpm that'll make it a little more comfortable
That's what I was telling Dan. When when you uh, when you get max horsepower, that's indicative of being at 2,700 RPM. You know, flat out. They're giving it everything you got. Starting to get warm again. Yeah, it is. Isn't that nice? It's cold on the way over here this morning. Jake, you doing all right back there? Oh yeah. It's flying not making you sick, is it? Nah. Nah, you're not gonna make me sick doing this. You wanna try? <laughs> well, you can always do some stalls. <laughs> hey, I've done that before, not a big deal. You got a floaty? <laughs> <laughs> we got cameras, we'll float him. I heard your overspeed horn. Hear it? Oh, I thought that was you making <laughs> noises over there. <laughs> That's your overspeed horn. We're not quite there yet. I really like this airplane. Okay, we're looking for any C-130s or F-18s. F-35s. Don't see anybody. Uh, Hicks traffic. Centurion's 2500 over top of Copeland inbound. Hicks. Looks like they got their hangar open over there today. They actually, got uh, the Centurion for Hicks, uh, red pacer headed your way. I uh, just took off uh, just out of uh, 1900, kind of level about 2000. Okay, we're right over top of Copeland at this time. Got him in sight. Where's he at? He's down below us. Oh, okay. All right, tell him you got him in sight, no, no factor. Uh, that Centurion's got the pacer in sight. Uh, Hicks traffic. Uh, Centurion's three to the west. Will be crossing over midfield. Left down one, one four. Full stop. Hicks. Well, see, it's left turn for a left park, girl. Okay, gas. Yeah, uh, we're a little premature yet for the undercarriage. We'll get ready. Yeah, you can go ahead and get the prop. That'll help you go down and slow down. Yeah, all the way in with it to 2700. Get the power out. There we go. Uh, Hicks traffic, Centurion's one mile to the west. Crossing over midfield for left now, went one four Hicks. Okay, we're just about there. Get the, get the gear first. There you go. 10 degrees of flaps. And we'll slow this bad boy down. X traffic Centurions over midfield, turning left downwind, one four, full stop. Looking good, 90 on downwind, 80 on base, 70 on final. Touchdown spot, come back on the power a little bit, we'll start letting her come on down. And the next notch of flaps will slow you down. Okay, got gear on the left, gear on the right. Got one out front. Alright, let's watch our speed. Let's turn it up for 80. 
Why don't you get another notch of flaps, that is? 500. Hello, Betty. Centurion left base, 1 4, Hicks, full stop. Looks good, speed looks good. Hicks, traffic, Baron, it's departing on 1 4. We'll be long gone before you get here. I guess that means I got too wide a pattern, huh? <laughs> oh, it looks good. There you go, got a little bit of a cross. Boy, I got, yeah. Alright, don't pick up any speed, let's hold our 80. Alright, slow her down, trim the nose up, slow that puppy down. There you go, keep that speed under control, you'll ace these landings every time. This looks good. Alright. Get about that next notch of flaps and we'll land this puppy at about 75. That turns up the visibility also. Keep your feet straight with your rudder, or your nose straight with your rudder. And then we'll see if we can't grind Dan's camera off the tail. <laughs> straight down the runway. Hold her little right rudder to hold it. Hold that straight. There you go. Hold it. Hold it off. Off. Yeah. Come on down. Hold it off. Hold it off. Hold it off. Hold it off. There you go. Just hold it off. Better the runway. Uh, let's get back over on this side of runway. That's right. We'll roll on out. Yeah. We don't need to do tires this annual. Yeah. All right, windows opening. Air conditioner coming on. Woo! Good job. Flip through another one. <laughs> Good job. Let's see how much more positive a landing you'll get flying those slower speeds. Oh, yeah. Man, it seems like just a shame to have to go back and work now. You know, that's the only bad thing about this. Once we get going, I, I'm kind of, I'm ready to go to see if I can't do a little better landing than that. At least get on the center line. So after they landed us back to the hangar, where as quick as they could, they open her up to get those compression checks started right away. They were expecting trouble on one cylinder, but what they found was a lot different. Ooh, we're looking at a 42. Okay, let's check something out here. That's not a good start. We don't have enough. We don't have a problem with number five cylinder. So let's just make sure. We're Might be doing more than one. Yeah, it looks like we're at 40, right under 40. What does that mean, John? Well, we're looking for something 40. in the 70s here. So, what we're gonna do, get that to quit this. This is a tired engine, it's past TBO, right? Yes. So, it's got uh, well over 1500. It's, it's not really a, a big shock. We've done a lot of flying. Like I said, I've flown it. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for compression to come up. <laughs> That's not a good sign. And it's just not doing it. <laughs> Go ahead. We got a... This is the one that we've been expecting to see this. Oh my. What does that mean nothing on a compression check? That means so much air is escaping through the sides of yes. the cylinder? Yes, shouldn't, you shouldn't see any, any air escaping out of one of those cylinders other than, you know, very, you know, he's putting, he's putting, okay. he's putting compressed air in that cylinder, up to 80 pounds of compressed air. And uh, then he pulls that he pulls that up to top dead center and he should see close to 80 pounds as that cylinder comes up as that piston comes up in the cylinder so we if, if you're not if you're not 
getting a good uh, seal. 70 or above or a good seal, then it's either leaking past the rings or it's leaking past the exhaust valve. Now we figured it was going past the exhaust valve in this one. Okay. Is I'm just going to look. This is so weak I can't even tell. So we should hear a click there. Okay. So now we're at top center. Um, normally I don't have to do this, but this cylinder is just so weak. I've got to physically look for where the piston's at to make sure I'm in the right spot. So now we'll try it again. And this is the best that we're going to see. You probably could take them gloves off now. Yeah, I think so. I'm not worried about the front moving. Wow. Yeah, there's a there's nothing here. That's a completely dead cylinder right there. So So what do you do? We could hear it going through the rings. Uh -huh. I'm sure I'll hear it here. Oh yeah. If you actually if that has <laughs> sound, that what a a real bad cylinder sounds like with a bad exhaust valve. Now it's going to happen. We're going to get the bore scope out, and it's going to look every color of the rainbow. And we're probably at the end of the day here going to decide that it's probably not going to fly again for a while till we do an engine change. Okay, clear. But. This gives you an idea just what a turbo can do because this airplane's been flying along absolutely flawless. On five cylinders? I can hear it going through the... Yeah, we're looking at 44. No, it's been doing it on about three and a half probably. <laughs> 48. Normally 70s or, you know, low 70s, 72. 78 is on a good healthy Continental 520 like this turbo um, Once you start getting down to the 60s generally you're uh, Running a little bit of oil Okay, so we were running on the basically we were running on the left side. We just skipped the right side of the engine That's the way it looks, but we had a turbo on this side, so <laughs> we did good So now what happens now? well Mark is gonna Mark <laughs> Mark is gonna decide what kind of engine he wants. <laughs> <laughs> now we're at 70. 60. Okay, so here's what that ring sounds like, okay? You hear that, you you know that's all going past the rings and down in the crankcase. And what are we at? We're at 58 now. Okay, so we got factory new which is a brand new engine, all new parts. We get factory reman, which is new standards uh, parts that are at the top tolerance. And we could save about $10,000, eight to $10,000 going that route. Or we'll just go ahead and overhaul this engine. And that's what we gotta figure out now is how many hours are on this engine? Has the case been apart? How many times has the case been uh, is the crankshaft been turned down and so that'll be a way a big factor um, there's some new parts out now the new continental engines uh, they got new rocker arms and uh, we might think about that option and see what benefits and what parts are going to come with a reman versus factory new Congratulations. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's going to cost you the rest of your life. <laughs> so now a major change of plans from Mark and John. No sense in doing the annual. Time for a new engine. Thanks for watching this episode of Taking Off and hope you learned some things about aviation and airplane engines. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.